Good evening and thank you for joining us. More details have become available regarding the possible explosion at Thunder Bay Pulp and Paper yesterday. While fire officials first stated that injuries appeared to be minor, it seems the situation could be much more serious. Two of the four injured workers have been airlifted to the burn unit at Toronto Sunnybrook Hospital. There's no update at this time on the individual's conditions. Thunder Bay Fire Rescue's acting platoon chief saw a video of the incident, which he described today as a fireball. The Ministry of Labour is currently investigating the incident and hasn't released the cause of the blaze. Canada has bid farewell to its 18th Prime Minister. Brian Mulroney was honoured today in a state funeral, reflecting his life, legacy and influential political career. Friends and family filled the Notre Dame Basilica, paying tribute to a leader they say helped shape our nation today. Joining the family, of course, was a number of political leaders as well. Mulroney's only daughter, Caroline, spoke of her father and thanked those supporting her family through the difficult time. In our grief, our family is comforted and so grateful for the universal outpouring of affection and admiration for what my father meant to them and to Canada. While he didn't care for polls, he did like good headlines. And those of the past few weeks would have pleased him immeasurably. A number of other influential Canadians spoke during the service, speaking highly of the impact our 18th Prime Minister had. To Russia now, where the death toll continues to climb tonight in what has become one of the worst terrorist attacks in the nation's modern history. More than 140 were killed and dozens injured when gunmen stormed a concert hall in Moscow. While an Islamic State group has claimed responsibility, Kamil Karamali looks into why ISIS is focusing its attention on Russia and the potential fallout of the attack. Crews dig through the rubble of what was once a concert hall in suburban Moscow, searching for bodies. Hope of finding any survivors grows dim with each passing hour. Tears flowing freely outside of the attack venue, mourners leaving flowers, stuffed animals, messages of sorrow. Friday night, four gunmen went on a shooting spree at the packed Crocus City Hall, killing people as they were fleeing to the exits. Eventually, the building was ablaze by morning, burned to rubble. Today, Russian President Vladimir Putin vowed vengeance against the attackers and those who support them. All four gunmen arrested a total of 11 people detained, claiming they were heading to Ukraine. I don't think there's any credibility to that. There hasn't been any, any support of that from any other intelligence agencies. The Islamic State, also known as ISIS, has now taken responsibility. It sees um, its attack as sort of a revenge, if you will, uh, against Russia for its invasion of Afghanistan some 40 years ago. Uh, Russian atrocities in Chechnya in the early 2000s, and uh, probably more recently uh, for Russia's involvement in Syria. Terror analysts now question what response Russia will have, if any, with its attention and resources still very much focused on the war on Ukraine. Kamal Karamali, CTV News, Toronto. Back here in Thunder Bay, where officials at Elevate NWO say it was a busy week at their warming center on Cumberland Street, after what's been a historically mild winter. Overnight lows dropped to minus 15 or colder on several days this past week, making the warming center all the more important for the city's homeless population. Executive Director Holly Govan says the warm weather this past winter has been a blessing for the people they serve. But she says the bitter cold on Wednesday and Thursday morning drew huge numbers of vulnerable people to their door. Uh, we were only open for a half day because of staff shortage um, and we still saw 130 people through uh, through our doors so it really speaks to the cool weather uh, and what it does uh, our outreach workers were out first thing in the morning making sure that people were okay making sure that they were safe that they made it through the night okay making sure that they have whatever gear they needed and whatever gear we have uh, in order to support them but uh, but yeah this is a, a challenging week for us for sure um, but we're, you know, constantly reminding ourselves that, you know, we've had a lot worse winters. And so we are grateful for the weather that we've had. Those wanting to learn more about the city's local health and wellness services made their way to the 55 plus center earlier today for its annual health and wellness expo. The event featured dozens of local professionals and businesses, as well as health presentations throughout the day. 
Jessica Clement reports. The Thunder Bay 55 Plus Center was packed on Saturday as it hosted its annual Health and Wellness Expo. The event featured over 70 community organizations as well as numerous presenters and support service coordinator Corrine Graham says there was a little something for everyone. We have exhibitors from like our uh, people from the hospital, people from St. Joe's, people from the library, uh, more community services so our community knows that uh, where to go. I could go on and on, but even from crystals to uh, speakers, we have massage therapists, uh, therapeutic massages, so a great variety. The 55 Plus Center has been hosting the expo for over 20 years, and Graham says she's happy they're able to give visitors and their family members the opportunity to learn more about the different services offered in the community. I think it's important to know that there always is uh, someone that you can reach out to and having that awareness or the knowledge of knowing who they can, especially for our isolated older adults in the community. Not everyone has a family member or friend to help them. So to have these services in our community, Thunder Bay is a great place to take care of each other and that's what we show here today. She adds that it's a great way for the public to learn more about the 55 Plus Center. A lot of people don't even know uh, what our beautiful building offers. So it's to draw in our community and say, hey, we're here for you with many activities, a drop in classes, things to keep you socially inclined. So I think it just brings social awareness. The expo was only on Saturday, but Graham says those who missed the event can contact the 55 Plus Center to learn what local services are right for them. Jessica Clement, TBT News. MPP So Mamakwa spoke at Queen's Park this week about the ongoing boil water advisories in many First Nations in his riding. The NDP member for Kuetnu called on the Ford government to do what it can to help in recognition of World Water Day. Uh, Niskandaga First Nation is coming on its uh, 30th year of, with a boil water advisory. Speaker, that is 10,641 days. Once again, uh, uh, tomorrow, is a World Water Day. Uh, in the writing of Kuwait, I have uh, 14 First Nations that have boil water advisories. Speaker, uh, it is racism to do nothing. That's right. Next week's budget is an opportunity for change. Will, will there be any allocations for money to lifting boil water advisories on reserves? Uh, uh, look, I can't uh, uh, confirm anything that will be in the budget. The member will have to wait until uh, uh, next uh, Tuesday uh, for the, uh, the details of the budget. At the same time, I know that uh, uh, the minister has continued to work uh, very closely with uh, our federal partners. Uh, as you know, Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the federal government made a commitment uh, uh, to First Nations back in uh, 2015 that they would provide the necessary funding to remove all boil water advisories across uh, the country. Uh, that is a promise that has still not been kept by the federal government. We will continue to hold their feet to, uh, to the fire. A network of CCTV cameras in downtown Dryden are now fully operational, and OPP say they've already been useful in solving cases. The cameras were installed last year and are now set up to stream directly to the OPP. According to a recent report from police, the video feed has been critical in investigating a number of crimes. The February police board meeting was the first to be live-streamed, and going forward, all meetings should be streamed and archived on the Dryden website. OPP also reported on the success of their downtown foot patrols and the launch of an embedded mental health worker program. What we see there is, is instead of just going directly to the hospital and, being, and having to you know, use their services, uh, this mental health worker can actually you know, avoid that going to the hospital and redirect them um, to the right place. Harrison says the city has gotten a 5% discount on its police costs from the province, which he says should save the city roughly $290,000 this year. Although the cost of OPP service has strained municipal coffers since transitioning from a city police force, Harrison says they're very satisfied with the service. To wrap up its 10th anniversary celebration, the Boer Alaskan Faculty of Law hosted an open house earlier today, inviting the public to chat with current students and staff and tour the facility. For the past three days, students, alumni, and faculty of the law school took the time to look back on the decade. Saturday finished off the festivities with an open doors event at the PACI building.
bringing in the public, law school alumni, as well as previous Port Arthur Collegiate Institute students who got a chance to see how much the building has changed over the years. Sarah McLeod, Manager of Strategic Initiatives and Student Engagement, says it's been encouraging seeing everyone at the events this past week. We're just really proud of how far we've come in a relatively short time. Um, our faculty has expanded, our programming has expanded, um, our integrated practice curriculum has been adopted by another school in Ontario now. Uh, it's just really a testament to all of the good work and the good things that we're doing here. We're just really grateful for the support, the continued support from the community, from the legal community. Um, I know our students really appreciate it as well and as, as our alumni network grows it's so encouraging to see uh, past students come back into the building and continue to support also. We're now joined by sports anchor Josh Mariner. Josh, just a great time to be a hockey fan like we were saying yesterday on the news hour as both local teams in the SIJHL kicked off their playoff runs. Yep, you get your choice. You can either go to Thunder Bay North Stars game, can't remember fighting Walleye. Hopefully both we get to see in the <laughs> final. We'll have the highlights from Friday's action when we come back.